You're listening to Press This, a WordPress community podcast on WMR. Each week, we spotlight members of the WordPress community. I'm your host, Doc Pop. I support the WordPress community through my role at WP Engine and my contributions over on TorqueMag.io. You can subscribe to Press This on Red Circle, iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app, or you can download episodes directly from WMR.fm. WordPress is a tool that helped democratize the web by making it easier than ever for people or businesses to publish a site to the web. And along with that came the rise of WordPress plugins, which provide easy solutions for website developers to build around. One of these plugins, GiveWP, was specifically designed with the problem of solving how can nonprofits collect donations online? Joining me today is Matt Cromwell, the marketing and operations manager at Stellar WP and a co-founder of GiveWP. We're going to talk about how plugins like GiveWP and WordPress can help nonprofits. Matt, just to get us started, you've been in the WordPress game for a long time. Can you tell us how you got into WordPress? Yeah, uh, yeah, a long time. That's right. I have to think back a little bit. Um, I got into the web stuff mostly because I was really interested in helping out higher education and faith-based organizations to get on the internet and start using it better. Uh, I jumped into things mostly with Notepad++, just doing a lot of HTML and CSS stuff. And I thought it was amazing. But then I realized that like, man, every time I have to update a page, I got to go and up, do the same header and the same footer and the same menu. And that's just so boring. I want to figure out how to do this better. And so that got me looking into different CMSs and whatnot. I was also dabbling in a big open source platform called Moodle which still exists today, does a great job with wow. uh, online learning. You know about Moodle? No, I, that sounds that's great. I have not heard of Moodle. <laughs> you should look it up. It's They actually did a re big revamp just recently, or they, I think they're in the middle of it. But it's a great open source platform for uh, online learning. And I found this random CMS called Website Baker, and I was playing with that for a while. But then I stumbled on this theme called Kubrick, and I was like, man, that's what I want to be doing. That looks so slick. And I still love that that blogging theme. And that was like the, the default theme of WordPress back when I was digging around. And like, that was like, probably like, when was that? Would have been 2006 or so. So it, it piqued my interest, but I didn't jump headfirst until about five years later. I had a lot going on. I had a kid and moving around the country, around the world, really. And I needed to build websites. And I was trying to fund some higher education of my own. And um, somebody was like, hey, uh, I know you build websites. Can you do it with WordPress? And I said, not today, but I can do it tomorrow. And uh, jumped head first in and they gave me some projects and, um, you know, kind of trial by fire kind of thing. And they dumped me into the advanced WordPress Facebook group uh, early on. Uh, we had like 100 people at that time. That was also a big learning curve for me. And everybody was really generous with their time and helped me get going. So, um yeah, I don't know. It's a long story. How much do you want to hear? <laughs> well, can you repeat that year one more time? The the year that you joined the the Facebook group. That was 2012. That's when uh, it it launched. Actually, um, mm -hmm. I had just gotten into WordPress like the year previous, uh, 2011. So you'd been asked to help with a nonprofit with their website, and you learned WordPress. You already kind of had been using other tools, but you learned WordPress for this. So they were already the, this this website was already on WordPress, and they were just kind of hoping you could customize it for them. Uh, no, it was it was an agent, a small local agency that that just wanted me to work with them and and serve their client needs. Mm -hmm. And they were building out new websites for for uh, nonprofits for faith based communities. So I got to build out some new sites. It was really fun at the time, and tons of challenges that I had no idea how to figure out. <laughs> So you're working with several nonprofits that seem to be like a specialty of this agency. And I can imagine that's what gave birth to, to give WP or uh, how to give WP come become. Yeah, started. slightly. Um, I think through the advanced WordPress Facebook group, I knew uh, a lot of the San Diego, that, that group uh, sprung out of the San Diego WordPress meetup. Um, and that, that's where I was based uh, at that time was San Diego, California. And I, of course, knew the folks there. And one person that I always wanted to work with, but never had an opportunity to was Devin Walker. Um, and um, he and I at one stage just said, hey, you know, uh, we should uh, partner up and uh, try to build some big things in WordPress and solve some awesome stuff because um, because we can do that. Um, and um, we went to the very last WordCamp San Francisco. That was uh, 2014. 
And uh, after the first day, we went out to dinner and just we just sat down and said, you know, he had done a lot of nonprofit sites too, and uh, he and we both were like, what 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 could we do that would just make lives better for folks like us who are building WordPress websites? Like, what is the biggest pain point? And we both were immediately like, donations, donations on WordPress suck at the moment. But it was intimidating because we had never built a big e-commerce powered solution before. So it took quite a bit of um, planning and, and thinking and determining that we actually wanted to do it before we actually pulled the trigger. So. Where, where came San Francisco? That was amazing. I was there, um, you know, for those last few years, it felt great. And so this, this was, it sounded like 2014. And I'm thinking that, you know, there was WooCommerce. Could you could you use yeah. WooCommerce uh, in any way to help with nonprofit yeah. donations? Yeah, that I mean, that's often what we did when they said, you know, we want to do online donations. We basically were like, oh, you can use something like Gravity Forms, honestly, with a payment gateway plugged into it. Especially at that time, they didn't have a lot of ways to really see the, the donors um, or it was just like form entries, right? And then you could use WooCommerce also, but then you're sending your donation through a cart, uh, which is weird. And everything is with taxes and shipping and customers, which is not what donors and donations are. So we were like, for, not forking WooCommerce, but like constantly having to like use filters and whatnot to make it feel like a donation instead of a product. And it just didn't feel right, that experience. Um, so... Yeah, we, we were like between, you know, forms that don't really help with donor management and e-commerce platforms that feel more like products, we we're like, there's got to be a, a better way to do this. I mentioned this at the top of the show. I, I love that there's always a niche plugin or theme for anything. And obviously nonprofits, I mean, that's, you know, goes beyond niche. That's a, a very large sector, a lot of websites and stuff like that. But, you know, it's super cool that someone could start up a WordPress site and with very little knowledge find a theme designed, you know, specifically, probably even for the, whatever their nonprofit is doing, probably find something catered towards them and find a, a tool like give WP. Um, so y'all were like solving a lot of the, I mean, obviously the tax issues and you're not shipping anything. Uh, there's not an inventory management system, probably plus, uh, being able to display names. It sounds like was kind of a, a thing sort of like we see on, on GoFundMe, sort of a, a list that encourages other people to get involved because they see, you know, the social pressure of seeing other people's names there and, and that, you know, it's working. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We call that donor wall. And uh, also having like a really strong nonprofits really care a lot about keeping good contact with their donors and everything. So uh, lots of different uh, aspects and features like that, that are unique to the nonprofit experience or the fundraising experience. That's not the same as an e-commerce store. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really interesting. And, and um, I think we're going to take a break here so that when we come back, we can, we talked about the history of GiveWP. I want to talk about what's next for GiveWP and also talk about Giving Tuesday, which is coming up soon. So stay tuned after this break for more with Matt Cromwell, a co-founder of GiveWP. Time to plug into a commercial break. Stay tuned for more Press This in just a moment. Welcome back to Press This, a WordPress community podcast. My name is Doc, and I'm here with Matt Cromwell, the co-founder of GiveWP, a, a WordPress plugin that makes it easy for nonprofits to accept donations, both offline and online. Uh, it's a really cool tool, and we just talked about the history of GiveWP. I want to talk about GiveWP 3.0, Matt. I've heard you refer to this as the next generation of WordPress donation forms. Is GiveWP... P 3.0, is that going to be like a, a major overhaul? Is it going to be unrecognizable or is it just going to be building mm -hmm. upon GiveWP? It's actually building upon, but in a kind of radical way. And it's not everything about Give. It's really focused primarily on the donation form itself. There's a lot to give at this stage. The, the way that you manage your donors, the way you can do don donor dashboards and donor walls and 
uh, all those types of things, reports um, and things like that. But the the donation form experience of, of creating your donation form uh, is really important uh, for fundraising professionals, especially because they want it to look a certain way. Um, and currently, you know, the way WordPress has worked for so long um, is that you have a screen full of settings that you uh, you know, configure to the way that you think makes the most sense. And then you hit publish and then you look at what you created and you have no idea along the way what it's supposed to look like um, until you finally publish or at least put it as draft or whatnot. Um, and that's the way Give works as well uh, to date. Um, but uh, Gutenberg and the, the block editor um, has uh, really changed the way people interact with the WordPress admin area a ton. And we've wanted for forever to be able to give um, our, our users uh, a visual donation form building experience. Um, but um, being able to do that is really complex. It takes a lot of engineering. It takes tons of code, it takes tons of practice and, and just uh, trial and error and figuring things out. Even just building an intuitive drop and drag uh, interface is really, really challenging. Fortunately, at this stage with Gutenberg, there's all of that code that's there and available and ready to be used. Um, and that's battle tested across millions of websites now as well. So we decided that it'd be a lot more beneficial, quicker, uh, and more stable for us to leverage that instead of um, building our own from scratch. So we're really excited about it. It's the next generation because it's really a visual form building experience, and it's really making that whole donation form creation process um, come into our modern times and, and no longer just um, configuring settings and whatnot. So. As an operator of a for-profit WooCommerce site, I, I know that pain of dealing with forms and not seeing something kind of displayed as you're doing it. And I it is cool to see block editor and you know uh, these Gutenberg blocks are really powering much more advanced feeling, more natural feeling interfaces where I'm seeing all sorts of stuff being built into Gutenberg blocks that's almost as good as like a standalone app or something. It doesn't feel like... You're sort of building something within something else and you go to a, uh, an advanced menu somewhere else and change some forms and add fields and then come back to your you know template it feels like everything's just there and it feels really great at the same time i'm kind of curious just because you kind of brought brought up the the manpower uh as much as these forms are making it better for the users i'm just kind of curious can you, can you talk about what was developing like for for the block was there you know, you, you, were, you were saying it's maybe a little harder than it was developing before? Well, I mean, what we're doing is with uh, our form builder is not quite the same as uh, a series of blocks. Um, and we actually have uh, several different articles that we've published uh, describing what we're doing. And because Gutenberg itself, the code base is, is architected in a way that's very modular and you can actually use bits and pieces of it as you like. You don't have to use the whole entire thing. And that's also what's really exciting to us is that you basically, we get to inherit the, the user experience of Gutenberg, but in a way that makes a lot of sense for our forms themselves. So there are major pieces uh, of it that is 100% Gutenberg. There's other parts of it that's 100% us. So just like what you were saying is like, there there's ways in which it feels like a, a, an app within WordPress um, but but it's actually still has that feeling of WordPress. That's exactly what we're trying to build. You're not actually building your donation form in the block editor itself necessarily. We're just using pieces of it in order to create this new interface that's going to feel natural and native to WordPress. That's what I'm so excited about. But th by that th that approach has tons of benefits and it does definitely brings us uh, to market a lot quicker, but it's still a pretty complex process. So it's, it's, it's taking time for sure. Staying on blocks. I saw that you mentioned new features such as donation form blocks for Stripe. Can you tell us about your Stripe yeah. integration? Yeah. Yeah. A cool thing that WordPress has been doing for a little bit is offering this kind of new block directory where if you're a single block plugin, then you get listed in the block directory. And the block directory works where um, you, w whenever you're in the block editor and you want to insert a new 
block onto your page or your post. Um, you can go and search for existing blocks you have in your site already. But if you search for a term that you don't have a block for, then you're going to end up searching the block directory. And then you'll have an interface where you can actually install that block on your site right there while you're in the block editor without ever leaving the block editor. It's a really powerful idea that WordPress core shipped a while back, and we wanted to try it out and see what it looks like. And so we came up with this idea of a really trimmed down, super basic donation form block that uh, is powered by Stripe. So it's just one block. It really just does exactly what it says. It creates a donation form for you. You get to authenticate your Stripe connection right there in the block editor. Um, and uh, you set, uh, upload an image and set some parameters for what types of amounts you want to have on there. And then you're good to go. So that process, honestly, Devin did that from start to finish. And he did it uh, uh, honestly, as an experiment himself to just really see what it's like to build blocks, especially blocks that are a little bit more complex in nature. And, and he really did get it done relatively quickly. I want to say for, I mean, you know, he's got lots of responsibilities in general, but I think, I feel like he got it done mostly in about four to six weeks, besides mm -hmm. also doing all of his regular general manager work as well. So it, it was relatively quick. And now it out, uh, that plugin, we launched it earlier this calendar year, and it already has over 500 active installs. So it's doing really well. That's great. And, you know, kind of thinking about other changes that have happened to GitWP throughout the years, I believe it started off around single time donation um, and mm -hmm. later recurring donations were added. What, what other what other types of donations are you all considering in the future that, that you know, don't fit within those two paradigms? Yeah, I mean, since then, we've done quite a bit more like one request that we had often was was sometimes folks have um, like several different uh, types of funds that they're trying to fund on their website. And donors often want to give to multiple funds, not just one fund. And so they want the ability to to more or less um, it's, it's it, ironically, it's almost like a cart system, like <laughs> add multiple donations to a cart in one form or another. We don't think that a cart is the best solution for that, but we have a plugin now, an add-on, a give add-on called Funds and Designations that lets you choose a single fund. We're working on a pitch right now for allowing that to enable folks to do multiple funds in one donation. And I think that'll be really powerful. The biggest one that we've done since recurring donation is, of course, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And for those not not totally familiar. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of terms around the fundraising world, but peer-to-peer, -peer, you want to think of something analogous to what peer-to-peer -peer is. It's like those like big marathon fundraisers, uh, Boston Marathon types, where you sponsor a runner, they have a team, mm -hmm. they recruit other people, but they're all recruiting uh, funding to go to their team for how many miles they run and whatnot, and all of the funds to the individual players and the whole team. They're all trying to get to a certain number and uh, be the best fundraisers. And all of that funding goes to the one central organization that's running that that marathon. That's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And that's a, a, a huge, huge type of fundraising that in the past, like when when I was just starting out building out websites for nonprofits, that was a, a six figure type of fundraiser. Like you really had to have massive software and massive teams to run those kinds of things. And for us to be able to really, our tagline is to democratize generosity, like to be able to bring this type of peer to peer fundraising to the masses in a way that's affordable and still robust. We're really proud of that. So um, that, that, one, that one's been out there for about a year and we're still working on it all the time, making it better all the time, but uh, it, it, it's really powerful as well. Our current focus really is on that uh, 3.0 as much as possible. And that's actually going to enable us to do a lot more with our forms themselves. So once that's actually out, you're going to see a lot more coming from us in different types of forms and different ways that forms can be styled, ways that they can be implemented on your website and all kinds of things like that. We're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we're going to wrap up our conversation with Matt Cromwell, the co-founder of GiveWP. We're going to talk about Giving Tuesday and how important that is for the community. So stay tuned. Time to plug into a commercial break. Stay tuned for more Press This in just a moment. Welcome back to Press This. Today, we are talking with Matt Cromwell, the co-founder of GiveWP about donation plugins for WordPress. And we talked about this at the beginning of the show, but there's this thing called Giving Tuesday, which happens each year on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. This year's Giving Tuesday falls on November 29th. Matt, can you tell us more about 
Is this a big deal for the nonprofit community? Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, it's a really cool initiative. It started, I'm trying to remember, a, a while, quite a while ago, at least 10 years ago, I believe. It's, it started by an organization called the 92nd Street Y, but now it's grown into its own organization. On It's a 501c3 of itself now. The idea was that, um, you know, the Black Friday to Cyber Monday phase is very, very commercial and very uh, consumer oriented. And so there was a bunch of folks who said, you know, uh, at this time of year, we really should be thinking more about how we could be generous and giving. So let's, uh, on the tail end of all of that commercialism, let's uh, have a day just for being generous. And so uh, it kind of took off from there. It was called Giving Tuesday in contrast to Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And it became a rallying cry for a lot of nonprofits to focus on this one day where they're really encouraging all of their donors to give on that one day in one form or another. There are lots of types of ways that people give now on Giving Tuesday with their time, with their money, of course, with their efforts. And it often is used as kind of the first day of the end of year giving campaign for a lot of nonprofits as well. But it's become a global thing. People all over the world are participating in Giving Tuesday now, and it's it's really exciting. We talked earlier about WordPress and, and you know, offering flexibility, obviously, with, with plugins. What are some other tools that WordPress can provide for nonprofits? Well, on a on a nonprofit website, there they they also need all kinds of things, just like donations. They also need ways to be able to interact with their donors or their volunteers. I really have been amazed with the rise in CRMs, uh, customer relationship management solutions in WordPress. Uh, when we first kicked off Give, like people were saying, "Oh, you can't use WordPress as a as a CRM. It's just uh, it, it's just too much." But WordPress has grown a lot, and people have gotten really good at leveraging it right. And and you can have a full fledged CRM now built into your WordPress website, and those are really powerful and useful. Great way to make sure you know what's going on in your donors, and great way to communicate with them. That's a really great one. Of course, nonprofits are also very concerned about SEO, just like any other online business. They're they're paying attention to those things as well. They they need their volunteers or their potential donors to be able to find them online. So the, all of those types of tools are really useful as well. When it comes to nonprofits, their their needs are are very very similar to your typical brick and mortar shop or online store. Just a lot more targeted at uh, donors and volunteers and board members and things like that. Well, I really appreciate your time today. Matt, it's been great having you on. And if people want to learn more about what you're working on, mattcromwell.com, probably, rather than sending them to Twitter. Or what, what are you sending people to now these days? Oh, yeah, let's not talk about Twitter, right? Yeah, mattcromwell.com <laughs> works, givewp.com works. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I am learned with Matt C on Twitter, if, you, if, if mm -hmm. it still exists by the time people hear this. <laughs> I'm sure it will. We're just we're just all like covering our bases and uh, try to try to navigate the Twitter situation right now. Well, Matt, it's been great having you on. If you like this episode of Press This, you can stay tuned. Next week, we're going to have a conversation with Jason Ball and Chris Wigman about GraphQL, Faust, and Headless WordPress. Thank you so much for listening to Press This, a WordPress community podcast on WMR. You can follow my adventures on at the Torque Mag on Twitter for now. You can also subscribe on Red Circle, iTunes, Spotify, or download episodes directly from WMR.FM. I'm your host, Dr. Popular. I support the WordPress community through my role at WP Engine, and I love to spotlight members of the community each and every week on Press This. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of WebmasterRadio.fm's management or sponsors. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of WebmasterRadio.fm is prohibited.